If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. When you do, make sure you hit the notification bell. That means that you will be informed of when a new video has been released. If you would like to take that support one step further, you can do that via Patreon, which is an optional monthly service you can donate money towards the channel. Or you can go over to Kofi. Dot com and for the price of a coffee you can help donate towards the channel as well links for all of those will be in the description of the video and without further ado enjoy the video right ready yeah absolutely Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you happen to be listening to another episode of the Non-League Nosh. I am James, and sadly, I am not joined by my co-host and good friend this evening. Uh, Adam has, for whatever reason, got other things going on at the moment, and he just couldn't get here on time. But that doesn't matter. He he invites the guest on and then doesn't turn up. But never mind. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll allow it this one time. As you be able to see from the title and the reason why you've clicked on the video, I am joined tonight by ex Ipswich, Yeovil, MK Dons, Northampton, and current Stone Market player Dean Bowditch. Dean, how are you doing this evening? You well, mate? I'm very good, yeah. I'm very good, thank you. Good man, good man. I suppose first question really is how are you currently finding lockdown? How are you how are you coping with everything? Uh, it's probably probably the same as many other people. It's um my job role that I'm in at the moment. Um, I've got a job obviously outside of football and I'm currently on furlough. So I'm sort of at home, not being able to do a lot. Um, mm. Obviously with the football as well, that's, you know, you just got to, I suppose, keep yourself busy. And for me, the most important thing was not only to keep myself physically, you know, ready, yeah. um, but mentally as well. So I'm doing a few things just to sort of keep myself ticking over really. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, I, I'm I'm in the same position. I was working from home for two weeks myself, um, and then very quickly the company just decided, no, we need to, we can't have everyone working from home. It's just not working. Um, yeah. So yeah, very similar. Other than the fitness thing, <laughs> that's, that's the only thing <laughs> I'm not really doing. But there we go. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a tough time um, for everyone. I think you know. Physically, I think most people are using this as a good opportunity, of, you know, by myself, to really take advantage of the fact that your one form of exercise to now, it, because that has been given, which is a weird thing to really say, but because that is one of the things you can do, most people are kind of taking it up. But mentally, yeah. I think that's yeah. what a lot of people are. They just want that. They want to know more about what's going on, don't they, at the moment? So, I think they're they're trying to be as transparent as possible, aren't they, by telling you as much as they can. But mm. uh, be quite careful, I suppose, of how much information you can you can yeah. tell the public. And um, at the moment, you know, ultimately, it's about keeping well, and keeping safe, and, and and trying to be as healthy as you can. And unfortunately, you know, too many lives have been lost so far. And hopefully, you know, the, it's started to slow down a little bit, but it's still for every life that's lost as a family that are grieving. So it's a, it's a real sad time at the moment, but, and there are more important things, you know, than your job and things at the moment when mm -hmm. people's lives are being lost. So it is yeah. what it is. We, we will stick together. We will carry on. And um, hopefully the country, the country and the world will come back stronger. Yeah, definitely. Definitely echo those, uh, echo those words 100%. Uh, so what we normally do on this podcast, Dean, just to kind of get things started, I don't know if you've uh, done your research prior to coming on, but we always go through, a set list of questions just so that people can kind of get to know you. Um, there's an either or choice in these ones. So I'm going to fire them at you and see what you answer. All right. So pub, bar or club? Uh, bar. Yeah. Good call. Good call. A lot of people go for pub, but yeah, I, I, we spoke to, who was it? Jamie Curiton. He said bar as well, to be honest. So uh, I think, I think for, for, for me, it, it's more... I'm not a massive beer drinker, mm. and I'm at, an age, I'm at an age where clubs just ain't for me anymore. <laughs> so, like, I had to think, right, what's in the well bar? It had to be bar. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to. Admit, I went to a nightclub last year for a mate stag do, and I just felt massively out of place within about five minutes. You just like, what am I doing here? Yeah, <laughs> Chinese or Indian? Chinese. Good call. Tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Yep, oh, two for two. Good answers. Favorite biscuit to dunk? 
Um, Hobnob. Yeah, that, that that is the most that is the most popular one. So I have to admit, uh, Instagram. It lasts, it lasts the longest. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a fair shout. Instagram or Twitter? Uh, at the moment, probably Twitter. Yeah. Well, sim with the videos that you're currently posting at the moment, you're loving life on there at the highest <laughs> <laughs> stand. Uh, current uh, music, or oh, sorry, fa- favorite music genre. What type of music are you into? Um, ah, it's so like I don't want to sound cliche, but I like a lot of music. Right. Um, yeah. If I if I was going to have like a go to, mm. it would probably be. Um, Oh my god! Indie, maybe a bit of indie yep. music, indie rock, indie rock, something like that. Finally, someone a bit with a bit of a originality. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone comes on here and answers R and B. Do they really? Yeah. Everyone. I was going to say I was going to say old school garage, but that would have been me at eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Favorite box set? Do you have one all time or one that you're currently watching at the moment? Maybe. All time one would probably yeah. be. Um, uh, do you know what I really liked? And I don't know if it's everyone's sort of cup of tea, but Twenty Four was massive for me. Yeah, Twenty Four. Yeah. Like I don't know. I don't know whether it's just the action in it. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why, but I just, I just, I just love that. But at the moment, what are we watching at the moment? We're watching um, Tiger King. Tiger King on Netflix. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my days. Oh. What's going on there? My, my, I have to admit, I sat down and watched that with, with my missus, and uh, the, sort of like the second episode from the end, she was just like, oh, this is just getting silly now. Yeah. I was, I was like, no, this it's, is it's life. Like, this is America. Watched, watched like four episodes, and like every time, well, every probably 30 seconds, I just looked at my missus and to say, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> That's just Quality. like my household. Just like my household. Uh, Favourite film? Um, do you know what? Probably something like a Tom Hanks, probably like a Green Mile or something like that. Green yeah. Mile. I'm not. I'm not like. A, I'm not like a massive. I do watch films, but I'm not like. That's my number one. I watch that again and again and again. Yeah. But like anything, anything with Tom Hanks, like Saving Private Ryan for me was was yes. Oh. Green Mile though. Green Mile. What I've watched that about ten times. Quality. Yeah, that is, that is a good show. We had Castaway on last night. Loves a. Uh was another answer we had. So there you go. Tom Hanks is clearly a favourite of people. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Yeah. Sky or BT? Uh, do you know, BT. You're the first person that said BT. Yeah. yeah. Other than football, favourite sport? Uh, golf. Golf. I'm, I'm, do you know, I'm waiting for the day that somebody says NFL and then I can really just like let loose into a chat. But so far, yeah. yeah. I'm not um, me, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's get into some football questions then, um, and then we'll move on to kind of like our main talking points. Um, football team you support? Spurs. Spurs, yeah, fair enough. Favourite player growing up? Who was like your idol? Teddy Sheridan. Any particular? Any particular Reece. reason? Why, yeah, why was Teddy your favourite? I just, I just him, him and Michael Owen, I think. At, at the time when Michael Owen went to the World Cup and done what he done, yeah, I was just amazed by this kid who was just like he was just tearing it up. Yeah, and, um, but I've always considered because I because I came from the ranks at Ipswich. Ipswich like they breeded like footballers, like what we would call like proper footballers. Right. And um, at the time I was coming through the academy, Teddy Sheridan was like in his prime. Like, yeah, ni- ninety nine. You know, like he was just just doing ridiculous things yeah. but he was so he was so underrated like everyone still thinks he was a fantastic footballer but he was world class like yeah. his intelligence like his his mind was already four or five steps in front of anyone yeah and that was that was the bit that i tried to emulate yeah that's the thing because not only did he score goals but he's just the way that he brought everybody else into play as well which is so underrated wasn't he? it was just so, yeah like you said he was so clever on the ball uh best player you've seen live um, Eden Hazard. Good shout. Something else. Yeah, the Premier League misses him massively. Um, the, 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 the best. He was yeah, quality. 
definitely definitely some of the other questions uh shall we do yeah let's do them I'll, I'll, let's let's talk about the current stone market dressing room let's find out a little bit of a uh, little bit a little oh. bit of gossip from that so <laughs> best dresser uh <laughs> best dresser you can say uh, Rick. Leon, Leon Otley Gooch yeah Gucci yeah, yeah. good shout worst dresser Dave Cowley you didn't even have to think about that one that was brilliant <laughs> who's who sorts out the music in the changing room uh Curly Williams yeah good yeah. shout He's in my year at school good play. yeah him yeah yeah him or Bully him or Bully Tom Bullard Bully's yeah. got some tunes to be fair now, I think I might know the answer to this one, but the best dancer? Best dancer? Mm. The kit man, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the answer. I knew it was going to be the answer. Um, Dougie Boy. Dougie Boy's got some absolute shifts in him. Yeah, he has. If if All you have to do is just follow Stone Marker on Twitter and you'll know exactly what we're talking about. Um, who can't handle their drink on a night out? To be fair, I've not really been on a night out with any boys. Right. Not not like not like properly. Okay. Who am I trying to think? Oh, we, we, went, we went on one night out for Christmas do, and who was struggling? Not not meant. No, everyone was all right to be fair. No. So I can't really answer that. I think I think the next night out, I'll let you know. There you go. <laughs> uh, best trainer. Best trainer. Mm. Um, best trainer, best player, and what I'm going to match that probably Sweens. Yeah. Something else in. Yeah. He's, he's non league messy. <laughs> uh, worst trainer? Dave Cowley. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, the final one um, from a Stone Market point of view your best moment at the club to date? Um, it's so hard because it's the way it's finished. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like. Um, I can imagine. I mean. When when we came back, who did we play? What was who did we play? We came back from two down. Can't remember what was now. See, this is where I need Adam. He'd know that stat right away. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. And um, yeah, we came from behind, and it was like you could see the togetherness in the group, and and yeah. the, the team we were playing against, the the guys on the bench were giving it large when they were they were two up, and right, and it was just that feel that feeling like as a group, we kind of not not just from like an individual point of view how we we feel we're the best team in the league but the togetherness was quality that day yeah um, so yeah that was that was that was a good moment that was a moment. definitely well let's um let's move on and talk about the current situation at stone market and um, with with everyone at the moment the season being null and void the season's from a non-league perspective at least has come to a very very abrupt end <sighs> I can't even begin to imagine what you guys as players and being involved in that dressing room must be kind of feeling about it at the moment. Do do you feel that the right decision has been made, um, first of all? And if not, kind of how would you have liked to have settled things? Do you think maybe they should have just waited or what's your kind of thoughts on everything going on? Um, so first, first of all, it's not just necessarily like so... But like from my my point of view, I came in quite late into the dressing room. Yeah, um, I feel even worse for every individual that have been there from the get go, from the word go in pre season. Yeah. You know whether they've been at the club for years or not. You know those boys that have been there that amount of time to 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 call it a day the way that they've done it is it, it must be heartbreaking really because yeah. putting so much effort and time and and commitment to it and. And to get nothing from it, it's yeah, it's it's and so for me, like oh, obviously I, I'm gutted, gutted for probably more the club really, yeah. Um, but I was only there for a short amount of time, so it's kind of um, God knows how everyone else is feeling. But um, to null and void the season, it's just I mean, don't get me wrong, they've done it, you know, throughout the whole of the the non-league and yeah, um, you know, points per game. You know, I would have liked to have seen that. I'm only I'm biased because obviously you know we were flying so yeah <laughs> it's it's really difficult because I don't I don't know too much about everything that goes on behind the scenes so financially and um, all the politics behind closed doors that no one really 
sees. Yeah. yeah. And that's the bit that's the bit that obviously sort of um I suppose they they don't want to tell you too much about, you know, the conversations behind or in or in rooms that you're not allowed to go in if you like. Yeah. <laughs> um and it's just a shame because for it seemed to, to to gel so well, you know, and to really they were romping homestow. Mm. And uh, yeah, I feel I feel really gutted for for the club, the chairman, you know, Tom Morley, the gaffer, yeah, the star players that it, from top to bottom for the club. I feel really I feel really sorry for them. Yeah. So you think the points per game would have been the right way to settle it because we've been talking about this quite a lot on the podcast and it's it seems to especially from my perspective the fact that the EFL and Premier League are still so adamant that they are going to get this season finished one way or another and they've been waiting and waiting and yet non-league was very quick to just kind of like dismiss it like no that's it season done does yeah. it do you know what I mean it, so you think points per game was probably the right way to go do you yeah, I just think because I don't know enough about like because obviously, uh, cut a long story short, it's a it's about financial gain, isn't it? So mm-hmm. the Premier League, the amount of money that's in the Premier League, yeah, you know, it's it's just it's incredible. So they're they're always going to finish their season. If they don't, if they don't finish their season, then I'll be shocked. And I think most of the, most of the world will be shocked. Yeah. Um, then you've got you've started you hear about the French league and stuff like that. How they've you know they've already sort of finished their season and it's kind of. I would have liked to have seen us finish the season in some capacity, whether that's a points per game or, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and they said, why can't we just wait and then play five games? You know, I, I, five games and then everyone plays five games, their next five fixtures. And then if you've got a chance of staying up or got a chance of getting promoted, then you still get that chance, but everyone else is in the same boat. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and that's that that kind of when when I was talking to someone about that, I thought actually that's that's probably the best idea I've heard. Mm. But you know, it's done and dusted now, and it you can't we can't do anything about it. No, because I suppose they also they went through uh, a load of clubs banded together to sign yeah. the petition to say that they want the decision to be looked at again. But then FA just quickly batted that one. Didn't even really ain't gonna change. They ain't gonna change their mind. If they change their mind, it just shows weakness, doesn't it? They're not gonna do that. No it does, and they also admit that they're wrong. So yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's not. It's, yeah, it's not going to happen. But again, you know, from my perspective, it seems as if they just wanted to kind of dismiss it because they're so concentrated on then next season. It's all about well, don't worry about this one. Let's at least start next season. But then, if a second wave of this all comes about, you're then going to be disrupting the following season as well. So, you know, where does it? Where, where, when can it end? Do you know what I mean? When, when can next? What, I don't understand why the focus is so much on next season when there's so few games left. I mean, if we were halfway through a season, yeah, fair enough. But we're like eighty percent done. Yeah. That's my. That's where I'm a bit. You know, and again, I get accused of being biased because Stone Market is my hometown club, so I do. You know, I have that connection. But you know, it just. I don't know. It, it doesn't sit well with me, but. Uh, it's interesting. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. sit well with a lot of people, and unfortunately, that someone they've got to make a decision some way or another. They're not they're not going to please everyone, and mm-hmm. it's kind of just a case of it's it's terrible, it's rubbish what's happened. Yeah, uh, but it's it's done now. And, and the thing that I like about how Stowe have reacted to it is they've been really gracious in the decision. They've not they've not come out and spat their dummy out the pram or. They've not gone mad. They've just said, you know what, like it's devastating, but we will we'll march on. We'll come back next yeah. year and we'll and we will and we'll do it then. We'll do it next year, we'll show you, kind of thing. And that's the bit that's the bit that I like about it. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. Obviously, they had their initial we're not happy about it, we'll work with other people and see what can be done. But then the moment that was then decided that no, you are hundred percent right, they've just said, Right, okay, well, we tried, but that's it. Nothing more. Yeah, they, they they they're not they weren't just going to sort of accept the first decision. They were going to fight yeah. for it. But you know, ultimately, there's there's only, like you said, they're not going to change their mind now, are they? No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know. we'll, we'll we'll come we'll come to talking more about your kind of time at Stone Market as we kind of go through your career now. Because I want to I want to go back in time to find out about your journey through football, if that's all yeah. right. Um, 
Let's first of all talk about your time at Ipswich prior to the prior to your debut there. How did the how did the move to Ipswich come about from a youth level perspective? Um, you know, was there somebody that came along and scouted you at the time where where you kind of invited along for trials that you know, and then they signed you up? What what's that process like as a yeah. youngster? So, so when I when I was I was ten at the time. Um, Ipswich didn't have an academy; it was a school of excellence. So okay. what that what they basically had were just training camps in different areas. Right. Um, and I was playing for another local team, and we were just playing in this tournament. And it was Colin Colin Suggett. I don't know if you remember the name. Yes. Yeah. And he he was at our tournament, um, and I'd done particularly well in that tournament. And he just came up to my mum and dad and said, "You know, look, we're Ipswich Town. And, you know." We'd love Dean to come along to our school of excellence um, and just come down and train, and and then we'll sort of see what happens. And then that was it. And it kind of, I was in the school of excellence, and then they changed within six months, a year of me being there to an academy. And just naturally, they just kind of took a groups from each school of excellence and said, right, you're going to be our academy right. um, in, all, in all the different age, in all the different age groups. And so it was just a case of you know now now you've got to travel to Ipswich on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, <laughs> and uh, mum and dad were buzzing. Um, and then um, yeah, that was it. And I was a, an academy academy player from eleven right up to I left at twenty one. So at the time you were the the cent the, the end the sorry the uh, uh, centre for excellence was that that was near your that was near you in Essex so is that right? Yeah, Brent, Brentwood. So it was okay. actually yeah, Brentwood. So that it was straight down the A12. So they must have had like um, I don't know how many centres they had, but mm. it, they would have been like a certain mileage of of where Ipswich was. Yeah, um, Brentwood obviously straight down the A12. And we used to just travel from from where we was, which was only about sort of half an hour right. Right, to go train. Yeah, it was quite quick for them to kind of change it into an academy, and then they invited me along to that. So, like I said, mum and dad. <laughs> They they were obviously they were really happy that I've been yeah. invited. But they didn't enjoy the driving. Yeah. So was uh, was Ipswich the first and kind of only club that really took an interest in you at that age, or had other things kind of happened prior to? That? As far as I know, because um, they would have approached my mum and dad. Um, yeah. That was the first club that you know showed any interest. You know, yeah. I, was, I was just playing locally at the time, and um, and then yeah, just sort of stuck with it. So yeah. yeah. And then, and no, then no, was, no one else, nothing like Man United came along with anything like that. <laughs> so then you're obviously then just going through the youth ranks, obviously going up in the age groups, etc. Um, at 16, that time then comes around for you, you know, you get that opportunity to make your debut through Ipswich. Kind of just talk me through the build up to that. Had you been in the reserves at that point, or were you still like under 18s, or you know, how 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 did that how did that happen? It's, it's quite strange, really, because I was, yeah, like I said, I was 16. Um, I came through all the different age groups, under 11s, 12s, 13s, 14s, 15, and but I was always like, I was always kind of playing a year up. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. To maybe kind of 13, 14, they started putting me just in the year above. Right. So when I was like, when I was 14, I remember playing um, in the same age group as like Ben and Darren Ambrose, and they, they. They won the, um, uh, the the League Cup or something like that. They beat Newcastle in the final. Right. And um, I travelled with, and at the time I think they were under 17s or 18s, um, and I was only 14. And they 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 took me along. So I got to I got to play. I played 10 minutes at St James's Park, and that was like that was incredible. Yeah. Um, but that was at that was at 14. So when I was playing sort of under 17s, and then I was like 17s, 18s, at kind of 14, 15. Mm. And then when I went, when I turned 16, um, basically what happened was they had loads of injuries in the first team, like their strikers. Right. And it coincided with the same time as the the lads that were doing their A-levels. So so all the boys are like 17, 18. Right. They were, like, they were doing all their, their exams. Yeah. So like the ones that they kind of thought, you know, they'd be able to replace or like sit on the bench or come in the squad. They, they were so, the exams and education was so important yeah. for all the young, the young lads coming through. 
um, that they just said, look, we don't want to take these boys away from their education because they've been working so hard. I mean, they they probably thinking I couldn't care less. Like, <laughs> I was going, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bit that <laughs> so um, a week before the game, they already kind of knew they had their injuries. Um, so they just needed to bolster up the squad a bit. And they just said, you know, look, you're going to be training with the first team. Wow. And um, and obviously didn't know how to take that. I was just, it was just incredible. Um, so I had a week, you know, Monday to Friday of training with, with um, well, grown men. Because at the time that? I just didn't like um scary yeah really scary because <laughs> if you think if you think of like the the day and or the, the, the player of today they're quite um some of them aren't they're not as boisterous and it's not as like um cutthroat as it was back then yeah and um, i walked in as a 16 year old into a dressing room with well jim Magilton. <laughs> I've only, I've only got a name in because that kind of gives you a, a kind of a, a that's, that's all you need to say yeah <laughs> what the dressing room was like and yeah um, Jim an incredible footballer but he was old school you know real old school and um he was brilliant with me he put his arm around me and, and he and he and he helped me along but yeah. you could just imagine how, how scary that must that might have been mm. yeah definitely um and then obviously you, you know match day comes around you're in the squad um, did you kind of get any inkling that you were actually going to be making a debut at that point, or do you were you just kind of sitting there thinking, "Wow, this in itself is an experience"? Well, I thought I thought I was going to be just in the stand at the start, um, so I was obviously buzzing just to go along. Mm. Um, and then, then when he named the the bench, I was obviously on the bench, and I thought, "Oh my god, this is like because I just just to see the name on the back of the shirt." And yeah. it was just that was that was that I could have just finished my career there. Uh, <laughs> and then um, yeah, with about what was it, twenty minutes to go, twenty five minutes to go, he sort mm. of um, you know, Dino go and get warmed up and a little pat on the head just to say, Go on, on you go, you go, go and go and enjoy go and enjoy yourself and then the rest is history, really. So then that first bit where you then take your you know, the step over the line. Yeah. What was that emotion like? Could do, could do you have any time to process it, or were you just what what was kind of going through your head at the time? No, you don't. You don't really. Um, you don't have any time. No, you just kind of go and get warmed up. Yeah, no way. Like you don't get. You just start sprinting up and down the line like a lunatic. <laughs> um, and then he's saying, you know, you, you know, you coming on. And Joe Joe Raw was was incredible. Really, I, when I look back at the managers that I've had, yeah. Um, I always thought Joe was like um, he was on me all the time, or like all the time to like hit target and you know like work on this, do this, do this. And at the time, I thought he was just on me and like being harsh. But actually, when I look back, he he was brilliant. You know, he was such a good man manager. Um, yeah. And I didn't, I probably didn't appreciate him as much back then as I do now, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's a shame, really. If I was maybe three or four years older under Joe, I think I would have done a lot better. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's something that when he sort of put his arm around me and he pat me on the head before I'm going on, you know, what great management that is. He didn't give me loads of like, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this. Yeah. It was just, you know, go on, son, on you go, go and, go and, have, go and have, have some fun, you know, in front of a full house at Carroll Road. It was like, okay, yeah. let's let's do it then. Let's go and have a laugh. And that was it. And next week, you know, I'm setting up two goals to win the game. <laughs> yeah. I, I... I probably should have mentioned this before we started, but as a Norwich fan, um, it was, I do remember you actually coming on that day. Um, so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I need Adam here, having the Ipswich part of me. Do you know what I mean? But um, no, I do remember you coming on that day. Was you there? Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had a season ticket right from when I was about six years old. Um, and it was just one of those that, you just you get you just you sit here to see this name sort of by like pop up on the screen. It's like, who? Who's yeah. that? Oh, okay. All right, don't don't worry about it. If you haven't heard about him, don't worry about it. And next thing you know, you're setting up those goals, and you're just like, for Christ's sake. Yeah. But I think yeah. was that the game where um, Rob Green was wearing his was wearing his hat, and the sun was like really in. It? I'm not going to say this, you know, that was the reason for it, but the sun was like really in his eyes. It was really bright that day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, kind of oh, yeah, like yeah. he must he must have pulled it down too far that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, to, I would like to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> no, no, I, that's absolutely fine. But no, 
that moment then where, you know, the full time whistle goes, you go back into the dressing room, you've just been part of that team, you set up, as you said, two goals on there. When does it really start to sink in what has just happened? Is it kind of like the following day or, you know, when you're in the dressing room, do you instantly just go and breathe? <laughs> I remember it really well because um, it was sort of embedded in me um, or embedded in me, sorry, mm. um, from a really young age about um, like winning. Like I've always wanted to win like games. Like if I lose, like you ask my wife, I've got, I've got better as I've got older. But <laughs> when I was younger, like, you just write the weekend off, you know, right, I wouldn't yeah. speak to anyone and I was, you know, devastated. So when you win, it's that, that adrenaline of winning something. It's just, you know, something else. So when I came off of the pitch, I remember being obviously excited and like all the lads were like, you know, they were going crazy over me and like, you know, they, it was, it was, it was brilliant, but I didn't really sort of set in what had just happened. Yeah. Until the, until the next day when my dad walked in with the sun. <laughs> right. he, walked in, he used to buy the sun all the time right and um he walked in with the sun i was on like the back page and um that that for him was just like you know for 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 a dad you know who sort yeah. of coached me and had tried to help me through for him that was amazing and that was the bit that kind of made me think right okay i've actually done something pretty yeah. cool there and you know where where might this lead me so it's it and then from from then on it was just like Going in, going in back on the Monday, and everyone was still buzzing over the weekend because ultimately you got you can't forget it was a derby, big derby game. Yeah, you know, so it had always had that added spice, and um, I didn't realise at the time how important it was, not just for the players but for the whole town. Yeah, definitely. Um, so then after the, you know after the game, are you then kind of kept in with the first team then, or do you kind of go back to where you where you you know where you were in the under 18s or? How did that kind of transpire? Because I know you made a couple of more appearances throughout the rest of the season, didn't you? Because the game was in March and yeah. then you made a few more appearances. So did they then like what they see and kept you in with the first team? Yeah, kind of like like you just said, they kind of when players were coming back fit, they just said like, look, you know, you go back to kind of 18s and the reserves and stuff like that. And yeah, um, but I, at the time I couldn't care less. I was just like, no, it's fine. Yeah, what, I was yeah. just so happy to be to be able to make my debut. And, and yeah. It didn't bother that because they were so good at sort of uh, bringing players through that you had that real trust in what they were telling you. So if they yeah. said that you might be just that little bit too young at the moment, go back and, and learn a bit more back in mm. that kind of age group and then maybe come back, come back better and stronger for next year. And, you know, and so I just trusted them. So I was never going to argue. I just said, yeah, absolutely. I'll, just, I'll, do, I'll do whatever. Yeah. And then was there any kind of conversation during the summer where they said, like, you're going to be more involved this season that were around because then you made yeah. you made a few more appearances obviously got your hat trick um yeah. the following season so yeah. did were, were you promised more game time or did that kind of just naturally happen as the season kind of progressed um yeah naturally really i think when when after the debut happened it, it was sort of quickly spoken about signing my first professional contract yeah um my 17th birthday was June and obviously I made my debut in March. Yep. Uh, so they kind of said obviously very quickly like we need we want to sign you on a, a professional contract. Um so it wasn't necessarily like you're gonna play more games. It was just like you kind of knew you was going to be more involved when they were giving you a professional contract. So it yeah. kind of like you just you just made sure you was ready and um so I just started to get a few more appearances here and there and um and then yeah like you said the 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 hat trick game was um yeah, that was that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it is one of those that really stands out um, from yeah. from my memory because I think the game was on Sky. I think I remember vag- vaguely watching it, but that's when you kind of really, ex- I say, exploded onto the scene. And from like you know, from a bit of a nerd's perspective, a football manager perspective, I was like, right, <laughs> Dean's one of those players you go and sign straight away because his potential is absolutely <laughs> massive at this right. point. Uh, <laughs> so. After, again, after that hat trick, kind of how were you feeling? You know, was it? Um, did you kind of feel like you know you you made it so to, so to speak? Were you kind of like in this bubble of I'm just enjoying myself, or now I've scored this, I, I deserve to get more game time? What were you kind of feeling at that age? So I was always so I was always I still sort of am really I'm I never I physically um, I never developed until a little bit later on. So 
when I was getting like more game time, I was just enjoying it so much, just being part of it that yeah. I never sort of felt like I deserved to be playing week in week, week out, week in week out, right. because I was kind of like when I was looking at the other players, I was just thinking, yeah, but he's he's quality, you know, like right. he's unbelievable. Yeah. So I never really felt like I deserved to keep playing, but every time I got the chance, because it, it was like it was, oh, I supported Spurs as a kid, but it was just my club, you know. I've been there, I was there for a long time and so just to just to put on the shirt for me was was enough um but then it was like the, the week before um i scored that hat trick um i started up with darren bent and bent he scored a hat trick the week before right and it, and it was just really funny because he banged in a hat trick and it was like you know well done bent, bent he, you know tap him on the back he's banging in loads of goals anyway like well done another three yeah. goals <laughs> and then the week after because we'd obviously done well the week before um I scored a hat trick and it was like, oh my god, like, <laughs> like this is unbelievable. You scored three goals and it's like, it, it's just the difference between me and him. Yeah. At the time, he was just like skyrocketing, just doing incredibly yeah. well, and it was almost expected for him to get a hat trick. Then when I scored a hat trick, it was like, oh my god, who's this kid? <laughs> like, he's just he's just got a hat trick live on Sky against Watford. You know what's going on here? So yeah. it was, um, yeah, it was it was a bit surreal, but I never I never felt like I. Um, sort of deserve to keep playing week in, week out. I was just grateful. No, the, the reason I asked is because we had Paul Hayes on a couple of weeks ago um, and he mentioned that towards the end of one season, he started getting a few sub appearances for Norwich and then done well during the pre-season and was told, if you do well in pre-season, we'll get you more involved in the first team. And the moment that didn't happen, he was straight away knocking on the door. Yeah. You told me you were going, you told me you were going to get me involved. Why am I not involved? And, it's just in, I just wanted to get your kind of perspective on where you, uh, were, considering you were actually in the team, doing yeah. quite well, and just to find out the difference between both. You know, it's, both strange, it's strange because when at that age, so seven, sixteen, seventeen, it was I was still a boy, I was still a baby, really. I look at I look at my young brother when he was sixteen, seventeen, and I thought, oh my god, like I was actually playing men's football <laughs> at that age. You know, that's just you know I wasn't ready, really. Right. But when I got to kind of 18, 19, and then I was I was doing well in reserves or I was doing well when I was coming on or I scored a couple of goals or um, whatever it may be, then I started to think, like, hang on a minute, like I think I should be playing. Yeah. Um, and that's when I decided, when I wasn't playing, and that's when I'd go and knock on the door and I would say, look, I feel like I need to play. And yeah. whether that's here, whether that's here, or whether that's somewhere else, I need to be playing because this is killing yeah. me. Like I want to be on that pitch. Yeah. Um, hence why I went on loan so much because I was just I just wanted to play all the time. I was just about to ask: Is that the reason why there were so many? Because I'm yeah. just kind of looking through your, your your sort of stats on 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 online, and you were st- you were getting games at Ipswich, but it wasn't maybe like on a consistent. Yeah. Enough basis. So, is that the reason why the loans were they all instigated by you because of you? The fact you just wanted to play football was that more yeah. the club? No, it was, it was mainly me. It was quite funny, really, because when I used to go and knock on the door, um, they Joe Joe Royal, especially when I first knocked on his door, he was just like he was actually quite impressed that I'd done it. I'd said that I'd, I'd kind of come in and I because he kind of knew me like and I was yeah. quite you know I wasn't a brash kid who's going to be like, oh, I need to be like doing it. It was just like, I knocked on the door and said, Joe, like, oh, God, gaffer, like gaffer, like, um, I want to be playing, you know, I really, I'm desperate to be playing. I want to go and score goals. I want to go and do this. And, and he just went, look, at the moment, you're not going to get games here. Yeah. He said, I, I love you being in around it and being close to the squad. But at the moment, I've got two or three strikers in front of you. Yeah. It's like, I was like, well, I need to go. Can I, can I go? And he was like, do you know what? Yeah. Go yeah. go play some football, and if I need you, they they always used to have like a clause in there to say if we really need you back, yeah. you know, I'll I'll bring you back, and that and that for me I, that wasn't a problem because, you know, ultimately that's what going on loan is. You go on loan to impress, and then you come back and you play for your 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 club, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's all I ever wanted was to to play as many games and score loads of goals for Ipswich. And when it wasn't happening, I was like, well, I'll I need to go and play somewhere else. Yeah, no, that's fair enough, and. We kind of go forward through the seasons, and then it gets to the end of the eighty, you know, sorry, two thousand and eight nine season. You're then released by Ipswich. Did you? 
how how did you feel when when that decision was made? Because again, I saw, the conversation I had last night with Alex Bradley, he's a youngster currently playing um, at Lincoln, and he said that actually when he was released by West Brom because he knew that he wasn't going to be getting the right game time, it was actually more of a relief to to be leaving. Do, would you kind of describe it in the same in the same way that it's just like right, I can now reinvent myself? Yeah, I think slightly different for me in that because I was at the club from when I was 10 mm. um, and then Roy Keane came in um, <laughs> and there was, well, the, the thing is like you hear so many stories about Roy Keane. Yeah. And, and when he first came in, it was like the last couple of weeks. It was really strange when he got appointed. It was like two or three weeks left of the season. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was just his chance just to basically stand there, watch a few players and make decisions on them. Right. Um, and, we had about 11, 12 players out, out of contract. Okay. I, was, I was one of them. And so I kind of had it in my mind already that he would want to have a big clear out and get rid of a load of people. Okay. And that's basically, basically what he did. And I remember going in and already feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going here and I need to sort of resurrect my career somehow. Right. So he was so good. You know, like it wasn't, it wasn't just like, yeah, look, we're not having uh, like all the best kind of thing. Right. He was really polite in saying, you know, I've spoken to all the other staff in and around the place and um, they speak so highly of you, but they've all, they've all sort of been in an agreement that whilst I'm manager, I'm not going to get the opportunity. So the best thing for me is to go. They were never going to ask for any money for me because right. they, didn't want, they didn't want to stand in my way of progressing again. Right. So, um, which again was testament to the club, really. They could have yeah. made a few, a few quid, but they just didn't. They just said, no, you know, we, we need you to go and play some football. Fair uh, enough. You're going to have a career. And, and that was it. So at the time, I kind of I knew it was coming. But I remember getting home and I was, I was, I was upset. I, I, I cried and um, it was like, it was a tough time for me that I knew I was never going to be playing for that club ever again. Well, at that well, time. It's a, I, it's I, a massive like, part yeah. of your life, isn't it? It's a yeah. massive it's chunk huge, of your life. Huge, so it's understandable. Yeah, huge part. And, um, yeah, so I knew, even though I knew it was coming, it was, yeah, it was really upsetting. And I just knew, right, this is it now. I've either got to roll my sleeves up and find somewhere and go and uh, mm-hmm. prove, prove them wrong kind of thing, or, or I do something else and, you know, I roll my sleeves up. <laughs> yeah. So when, when you are then a free agent, um, is it one of those things where it's kind of like just like trials galore and contracts coming in and, Agent, you know, agents on the phone. I've got this club available. You know, what do you re- what do you reckon of it? Or you know, what kind of options were available? Obviously, we know you went to Yeovil in the end, but yeah. what was on the table when you were when you were an uh, agent? When I went, so I went on a couple of trials, um, which you know, I was I was I was happy I was happy to do because I feel like I needed to prove myself to someone to yeah. give me a contract. I was never one to kind of say, well. You know, I, I should be getting a deal elsewhere because I've, I've played yeah. a few games with Ipswich. Jesus Christ, like, you know, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, I only played, what was it, 70 games. Mm-hmm. You know, I've not, I've not played 500 games. And, and you know, if, I, if I played that many games, then I'd probably expect that someone doesn't need to see me before they sign me kind of thing. But right. I hadn't done, hadn't done that, you know, so I needed to go and prove myself. Um, and I went to uh, Knox County and I was on, I was on trial there. Uh, and they, at the time, they were in League Two. Yeah. Um, and I remember the I'd done a week's training there. And the week that I went, I didn't touch a ball. We just ran. And I thought, I thought because it's pre-season, they were just like, they just said, like, what we do is for the first week, we just run. And then the second week, we start getting the balls out. <laughs> so I thought, I thought, right, OK, so I've just got to prove to them that I can run. OK, fair enough. <laughs> So, um, so I went out and I just I'd done the week, and it got to the I think it was the Sun Saturday or Sunday. It might have even been Friday, and mm. I got a phone call to say that that Yeovil were interested in in seeing me, and that they were in League One. So I thought, yeah. you know, I want to try and stay as high as I can. Yeah. Um, at these kind of early stages, so um, I sort of politely went in and said, look, Yeovil have asked to kind of see me, and I I want to go. Um, they weren't too pleased because I think they they wanted to sign me, but um, right. I just kind of said I've got to take take the gamble kind of thing. Yeah. 
Um, and then I went down there, and for the for that for the next week, we had the balls out. It was there was running. Don't get me wrong, but it was so much more with the ball. And um, after that week, they just said, "Look, we want to give you a, a contract." Yeah. Um, the only reason why we really wanted to see you was not to see you as a player because they'd seen me play for Ipswich. Yeah. It was just to make sure that I was fit. Um, and because I'd done that, that week slogging at Notts County, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that was it. Yeah, that's how I, it wasn't like a case of, of this club, this club, this club, this club. It was just you know I really only had two or three opportunities to go somewhere, and um, yeah. I just I just decided yoga was the one. Any sort of hesitation moving kind of that far away from where you'd previously spent a big chunk of your life because that is a hell of a distance to go from Suffolk down to uh, down to Somerset, isn't it? Yeah, it was. There was a there was part of me that was thought, wow, this is this is quite far away. Yeah. But then there was also there was also part of me that said you know if I'm going to have a career, then there needs to be somewhere wherever I go that I need to be fully focused on football. Yeah, and it was like I went down there and I, I, I my wife now you know my now wife was my girlfriend at the time, mm. and uh, spending time away from her was killing me. Yeah, um, but it, it kind of it needed to be done and and even though we saw each other maybe once every couple of weeks or, you know, if I was lucky once a week, um, you know, it, it kind of, it felt right to do it that way um, yeah. because it's all worked out in the end kind of thing, you know, because yeah. now we're living together, we're married, we've got, we've got a kid and that, and it's all worked out. But yeah. um, at the time it just felt like I really need to concentrate here and really focus on the football. Otherwise yeah. my career is just going to, just going to die. Yeah, definitely. Um I've done that away. I've done that away journey. I know what it's like going from uh, from Suffolk to yeah. so it's a hell of a it's a hell of a slog. But w- was um, was Ed Upson there at the time? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was there in the um, my second season. Oh, okay, right. I was, was going to ask if he was a factor in moving down there, but uh, obviously not. So during the first season, although you had an injury, you finished up top goal scorer there at Yeovil. Um, yeah. Would you consider that um, a successful season? Um, yeah. From like a personal perspective, um, how do you how do you think your uh, first season went there? Yeah, I, I was I was gutted when I got that injury because it was in the first game of the season. I scored, yeah, um, and then I, I I fell awkwardly and dislocated my shoulder, um, and I was out for three months. Right. So after having such a a, a really good pre season, yeah, then scoring on your debut for the club. You kind of thought, you know, here we go, like this game, bang in twenty five goals. Yeah. Um, then I'm out for three months, and you kind of yeah. think, ah, oh. you know, so that was tough to come back from. But you know, I still managed to. I mean, I got double. I got ten goals in the end, which really yeah. for a, for a club that's down at relegation, you know, to have their top goal scorer and ten goals. I think our next one was on like nine, eight, seven. You know, we we got goals from everywhere. Yeah. Um, and managed to stay up, which was which was probably the, the biggest achievement. For that season, really. Yeah, and then the following season, you were also top goal scorer as well um, yeah. for the club. There was a, it was a very small progression from fifteenth to fourteenth from just do, by doing my research. Um, you then rejected the the contract um, after being there for two years. Did you kind of just feel that you? What, why did you reject that contract? If you don't mind me asking, and having been top goal scorer for two seasons in a row you were obviously doing very well down there yeah i think it was well like we just sort of touched upon location yeah yeah <laughs> you know it was it was it is miles away um <laughs> yeah. and but i i was i had such a good relationship down there with like terry skivett and nathan jones and and the whole club it's such a nice little family knit club yeah. but i just felt like i needed to take a step up right um to progress my career, you know, yeah. and I was at, I was 20, 24 when I, when I sort of left the club or 23, yeah. 24. And I thought, right, I'm, I'm coming into like my prime of my career. Um, you know, I want to see where I can go with this, you know, cause this could be my chance, give me my chance to maybe go right up into the, to the big leagues. And, um, yeah. that was the reason really when, when MK came in, I kind of thought, no, this is, this is it. I, I need to move on. Yeah. So then the move obviously to MK Dons comes around. Um, do you remember that kind of first conversation with uh, with Carl Robinson? What was that like? Um, yeah, it was. 
it was John Gorman actually. John Gorman was the one that rang me. Oh, okay. Um, I worked with John John under one of my many loan spells, um, <laughs> and he he rang me and, and I knew he was assistant manager there at the time. Yeah. And um, as soon as he rang, I was just like, okay, they 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 want me kind of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and John John being such a legend uh, in in the game and such a nice guy, he just said, look, come down, come and have a chat. Um, we'd love to sign you. Yeah, and I went. There, I went there in a heartbeat because I played there. I played there whilst at Yeovil. I scored there whilst at Yeovil. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved the stadium. I loved the setup. Um, and then as soon as John rang, that was it for me. Like I spoke to Carl obviously once I got there, but right. having that conversation with John originally was the one that kind of made me think, yeah, I, I want to sign. I want to sign for him. Yeah, definitely. Because um, uh, that you know, joining MK, you know, at the time, did you kind of think that? With it being such a new club, this is a great opportunity to really sort of create a legacy for yourself, so to speak. Or was that kind of playing? You know, was that in your thoughts at the time? Uh, at the time, it was like so. I've been released from Ipswich. Yobel signed me for like a year, then they signed me for another year, and then MK came in. It was like a three-year contract, and so it was kind of like yeah, yeah. It was like twenty-four three-year contract, prime of my career let's go and make something of this let's actually right. go and say right like i've got a real chance here to 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 sort of make a name for myself not just in football but at a club you know at, at, at one club um and that's how i felt that's how i really felt i felt this is the one this is the one where you know carl was playing magnificent football you know he he he, he yeah he breeded a real proper team of footballers yeah. um we had a, we really put a team together that was incredible um over that time that was there and um i just yeah so, as soon as i sort of spoke to him and john and and i'd seen them from the year before as well especially and i yeah. thought yeah I want, to, I want to be part of that yeah definitely definitely um and all things considered a very successful very very successful time at mk obviously there's playoff appearances that you know promotion to the championship it's not you. You were there for a long period of time. What what was it in particular that kind of made you stay? You know, beyond the three years, did you feel at home after that point? It was kind of um, yeah. I've had a lot of ups and downs. I think um, the, the 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 reason, probably the main reason why I stayed. Um, the first two seasons, I finished top goal scorer again for the first. So it was like two seasons at Yeovil, two first two seasons at MK I was top goal scorer. So I just felt yeah. like I was doing well. Um, and then my third season at MK, I, I, I got injured. Right. And, uh, I was out for like nine months on and off. Cool. Um, and it kind of, it really knocked me for six because I, I was flying in the first yeah. two years. And then this just hit me and, and it came out of the blue as well. And I've never had any problems before. Right. Uh, and I remember kind of like, uh, having a chat with a few players, and I, I, you know, I know you've got a beard and all that, but I, my beard was like down here, and my hair was just all scraggly and that. And <laughs> I was going into football, and lads were like going, "Mate, you're all right," kind of thing. And I was just so down and like just thinking, I just don't, I can't see, I can't see the light, I can't see the end of the end of this journey. This is killing me. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually, I managed to get myself back to sort of playing. And I remember sitting down with Carl at the end of the season that season, and obviously it'd been a rubbish season for me but not great season for the team either right and he said look i've sat down with with pete the chairman pete winkleman yeah and, and we feel like you deserve to be given another year because this year just hasn't reflected how you've started at the club yeah uh, so we feel like you deserve to have that chance now you're back fit yeah and that for me that was like like that that showed me sort of the type of club that it, it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was kind of, they really actually care about their players. Yeah. Uh, and I know there's, like, loads of history with the club and how it's formed and that, and there's a lot of hatred towards the club. But when you actually work within it and you ask many players that have been there, yeah, they all say the same thing. They, say, they really do care about their players. Yeah. Um, and I just got given that chance again. I just said, I can't, I can't now leave. <laughs> yeah. I can now go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so I stayed for that extra year and that was the year we got promoted <laughs> yeah. to the championship. Yeah. 
No, I, 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 I very, very much hit a chord when you just said that because I remember um, it was just it was over a year and a half ago. I injured my ankle quite badly. I tore three ligaments in my ankle. Um, I was out for six months, and I, I just I remember spending a lot of time on my own at home. Not you know, the visitors start to slowly dry up over yeah. time, and you can sink into a very very kind of dark place during that time kind of like who was the was there one person in particular who kind of helped you out and you know kind of changed your sort of like mentality at the time or was it like a combination of people how you know how important were the club as well in that in that moment do you remember but family for starters were like they're always there you know they 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 never really stop supporting you you know yeah. mum your mum and dad and obviously my wife especially was mm. she had to put up with me you know, 24 seven, God bless her. Uh, <laughs> she did. And she supported me massively. So, yeah. um, but the, the club, especially when, when I said some real bad days, um, you know, they, they, I remember Carl, he, he actually hired a guy, um, which they he used to do all the psychological stuff. Right. Okay. And he, used to, he used to come into the club, like, you know, once a week and, um it sometimes sort of speak to players that Carl felt like he needed to speak to. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, I was one of them because right. of you know, I was just coming in, like I said, big beard and that. And it was like, I feel like you might need to speak to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I yeah, I spoke to Simon and um he really helped out and he really said, Look, you know, you're going for a tough time, but you know, don't forget you, how well you was doing before. It made you feel really good about yourself and yeah. And that kind of really helped. Really helped, and the physio department were, were brilliant as well. They, they just, I, I'd, I'd hate to be a physio, not just because they work such long hours, but um, because they they have to deal with footballers who are injured. You know, they're they're the worst type of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, again, I kind of remember going off and somebody from my work noticed that something wasn't quite right with me at the time as well. Um, and they said, look, you know, you know, you need to go and speak to somebody. Yeah. Um, and just having that independent person just kind of talking to you and just being honest, it really, really did help out at the time. And as I said, the moment you said it, I instantly knew exactly what you were, you know. Yeah. You know, obviously different, different circumstances, you know, football is your life, etc. But I, I, I just 100 percent connected yeah, with that. The difference, the difference between yours and mine was I was I was getting to see people every day. Yeah, you know, and and my my like my mates like were coming in and they were like making jokes and trying to cheer you up and that all yeah. the time, and they were obviously they were a massive help as well to be fair. Um, but if you're at home and you you like you said if you get your visitors at the start who are kind of like free flowing every day, yeah. and it starts to dry up, I can only imagine sort of what you have to go through. So yeah, it's 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 tough. It is tough when you're injured. That's the thing, you know, and obviously, you, you know, you mentioned obviously about your wife. I remember, you know, my, my wife at the time, just she'd come home and be like, oh, do you know, I'm going out with the girls this evening. Do you mind? I'm like, oh, no, yeah. no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Don't worry about it. But then you just spent like the last eight hours on your own and you're just like, oh, God, it's another four hours. Cry. How am I going to cope? <laughs> four anyway, hours. I'm sure it's longer than that. But, well, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's get let's get back to the football then. So. You have the season back after the injury, um, and you mentioned about the promotion season. Would you say that was the hot, one of the highlights of your career, that moment, or would you say it was like the, the top moment, getting getting MK up into the championship? Yeah, best best moment of my career so far. Yeah? Well, it will be. It will be my best moment of my career. I can't see anything emulating like that now. You know, it's, mm. it's kind of... When you, when you, like I was saying, you put, you put a team together that just... Um, they click on the pitch, off the pitch, you know, uh, whether it's football, whether it's, you know, playing on PlayStation, whether it's like different hobbies and golf or whatever. Everyone was just, just on it. And yeah. you just get that feeling you're going into training and, and like people are still like, like going into tackles and tackling, but there's no like arguments. It's just like, it's, it's all done properly. You know, they're not tackling yeah. to hurt you, tackling to win the ball. And, you know, and then it's like, you you will play games at the end of training and it's like real like fire to win the game you know and and yeah. suddenly just see this team this team are going to do something well this year yeah um, and we did and 
And it wasn't just the fact that we got promoted, it was how it happened as well. And I don't know how much you kind of know, but um, we were we were chasing Preston. Preston was second. And they were like 11 points clear of us with like 10 games to go. And we kind of thought maybe that was done and dusted. Um, yeah. And then we just won, we won, we won, we won. And Preston didn't lose, but they kept drawing. They'd draw a couple, yeah. then they would win, then they'd draw a couple, then they'd win. And on the last day of the season, we were, we were, I think, either one point or two points behind. So we needed them to lose. And they hadn't lost in like 25 games. God. And they were playing Colchester, who were, um, they needed to win Colchester to stay up. Right. So Colchester versus Preston, we were playing Yeovil. Yeovil had already been relegated. We <laughs> were 4 nil, We were 4 nil up at half time. So our game was done. Yeah, yeah. And we were just listening out for the score at the other game. <laughs> and then there was this massive roar and Colchester scored, ended up beating Preston 1-0. And then we went up, we overtook Preston on the last day of the season. So that, that was like, ah, oh, that was the best feeling ever. Yeah. Brilliant. I can imagine when, as you said, your game's kind of done dusted. It's yeah. just about going through the motions and, like you said, just keeping an eye. I can't, I, I can imagine that must have been a hell of a, hell they of a... Show- they showed, um, so the Dons put it on their um, their Twitter. They done it for YouTube. Um, yeah. Played yesterday. They played our promotion in um, 2015. Was it now? Yeah, 15? yeah, 2014, 15 season. Yeah. And they played. Then they played today. They played when they got promoted um, last year. Right. And um, I watched the last like ten minutes of the game. I only caught the last ten minutes of the game yesterday. Mm. And it was so funny because we had obviously won the game, but we 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 knew culture had just scored, so we were just literally just passing the ball around. Yeovil wasn't pressing us because they they just thought, what's, we, what's, the we, we, what's, the, "What's the point?" And, and it was like it was like a real rubbish, crappy training game. It was just so it's such a rubbish game to watch, but it was just the excitement was just ah, oh, it was it was brilliant. And what came after that as well, like was was just the, the best time ever. Yeah. And then you're back in the championship after all, you know, after after leaving Ipswich, yeah. you're finally back in the championship. What why I suppose why do you think that it didn't work out for MK um in the championship? Was there anything you kind of pinpoint and say that, you know, we just didn't get the rub of the green or you know, what why do you think they couldn't survive that particular season? So there was probably a number of reasons. Um I think the rubber to green one is a great shout because we conceded, um, I want to say we conceded maybe 10, 12 goals in the 89th minute plus right. in quite a few games to lose the game. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So we, were, we, were, we were dropping. So I know it's only one point, but over 10 games, you know, we would have stayed up. Yeah. So the rubber to green at times was... Um, and you, I suppose you can call it a little bit of like concentration as well and stuff like that. So there's a lot that we kind of fell short on that season. But the yeah. biggest, thing for, the biggest thing for me, and you know, and I know I've spoken, I've spoken to the chairman about it sort of um, <laughs> at the time. But we we let the wrong players go that right. season. Um, you know, we had we had Will Grigg who fired us basically from League One into the Championship. Yeah, um, and we, I felt like we didn't do enough to keep hold of him. Yeah, you know? because we, as another player, as a, as a teammate, I was quite happy for him to be earning three times as much as me. You know, for, because I knew he was going to go and score twenty five goals to keep us in the league. So yeah. it didn't that didn't bother me. And every other player would have said the same. Yeah, but we, just, we let go that kind of player who just knew how to play our system. He he was banging in loads of goals. He liked all of us. He li- loved the club. Yeah, um, and we didn't keep him, and it just it just felt like oh, if we're gonna if we're gonna go again, we needed to do that, and it just showed it just showed we you know we didn't score enough goals, and we we leaked obviously too many towards the end of too many games. Yeah, because again, kind of just literally as you were talking there, he scored twenty one goals in the season that you went up, and then your top goal scorer in the championship was six goals. Yeah, so there you go. What. At the beginning of the season, where he was gone by that point, I'm guessing, Will Grigg, yeah. before the season had kicked off, 
were the were the you know were the squads still confident that they could that they could do something or does that kind of stuff play on your mind as the season's kind of progressing or do you not really think about it maybe until till the end of the season? I think um, we always knew when when you go up into a league like that and and you know that like our wage budget was a lot less than than most. Cool. So you kind of had that feeling straight away that like you know it's going to be a tough season. Yeah. But you have to try, you have to try and work. You have to forget about that and just say, look, we need to stick together. We need to um, we need to win games of football ultimately. But yeah. I think um, I think the other, probably the other reason actually why it didn't quite work out for us was we was a we well, we was a footballing team. We was like you know a, a, a poor man's Barcelona really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we kind of we used to pop we used to pop teams like off the pitch like 70 percent possession away from home at like middlesbrough and places like places like that yeah and then they'd beat they'd beat us 2-0 yeah and you can't think how the hell have they done that and it was literally just because they were so clinical yeah and that was that was not just um the fact that we let the wrong players go because we just we probably played too much football <laughs> yeah yeah no so, and actually we didn't say like at those real key moments let's cut through them and let's let's be clinical and we just didn't yeah. do it yeah god it's just, it's just like listening to norwich's season my, my, it was my fault <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> didn't score enough goals yeah. sorry <laughs> so obviously mk then go down you spend one more season with mk um and then they make the decision that you're going to be leaving yeah at the end of the season um i'm guessing from what you've talked about and how much you loved your time there did you? Were you, you? I can imagine you were quite disappointed at the time. Well, had stuff kind of gone on that you knew it was going to happen that it didn't yeah. come out of the blue? Or what was the situation there? Yeah, again, it was. Um, so Carl got sacked. Um, obviously, we've been relegated, and then we just didn't. We we just expected that we would just be able to bounce back up. Right. Um, but again, we just we wasn't gelling the same. That team that got promoted, we just didn't have that same sort of gel in the team. Yeah. Um, so we started losing games and then we ended up being kind of sort of lower half of the bottom half of the table, if you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. fluttering with the relegation and that. Yeah. Um, and the chairman just decided, you know, this is going the wrong direction. And, and Carl being such a, an advocate for the football club and, and, and creating an identity there, you know, it was a, it was a tough decision to, to, to have to sack him. Yeah, definitely. Um, but by doing that, he obviously annoyed a lot of, us because there was a real core cool group of players that just had such belief in him and such trust in him. um and when Robbie Nielsen came in Robbie Nielsen was the one that just said well I want to I want to have a reshuffle you know and and if I'm going to do that I need to get rid of the players that that are cut like Carl Robinson's boys you yeah. know and he got rid of like the whole spine of the football club um yeah. and Rightly or wrongly, because uh, if I was a manager going in, then you know I, I, I would probably want to put make my yep. stamp on a team, you know, and 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 do it my way. And I get that; I totally understand that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was even though I knew again, I knew it was going to come because I'd had that conversation with him quite early on. Um, yeah, I was gutted, gutted because again, I'm, I mean, I, I I love that football club. You know, I've, I've spent six wonderful years there. So yeah, it's, it was tough. So. Yeah, um, completely different industry. But I, I, I used to work in banking, and I remember my manager for my branch left. Somebody came in to replace him, and literally within about two or three days, f- uh, four of us were transferred to another branch because he yeah. wanted a complete reshuffle. So it happens in every industry. Yeah, yeah. The moment, yeah. The moment somebody new comes in, you know, what was your? Did you kind of? Did you have an opportunity to you know establish a relationship with? Um, with Robbie Nielsen, or did that just kind of not happen? It was just like he instantly decided you were one of the people he was going to eventually get rid of. Yeah, I think um, I never, I didn't, I didn't dislike him, you know, mm. and, I, and I don't think he disliked me, you know, as, as a as a person, you know, he he just he had his own way of wanting to do things. Yeah, and um, I just obviously didn't fit the bill. You know, yeah. that's as simple as it. And it's kind of it's such a sort of a cutthroat industry. Yeah, uh, football in that. It's so it's such an opinion based game um, that you know one guy can come in and literally change your whole life, yeah. um, and and he did. You know he completely changed sort of my career and changed the direction of it. And um, you know I don't blame him for that because you know yeah. he, he had to make decisions. So 
um, it was up to me then to even make a decision. Where, what do I do? Do I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was. Yeah, it was tough. It was. A, it was a tough time. That definitely. Um, at the end of that season, you then joined. Well, you then released from the club. You joined Northampton. Yeah. Relatively close to uh, to this part of the world. Uh, I say relatively close. Nothing's close around here, to be honest. Is it? Let's face it. <laughs> um, but again, what offers were on the table at the time? Do you remember? You know, were you having conversations with different clubs, or was it very similar to when you joined Jovial? Like at the moment, someone said, "Look, we want you." Yeah. This is the opportunity, you kind of jump at it. Yeah, it was. Um, it was probably slightly different this time around because I'd established myself as like a um, like a. So I suppose a League One veteran. Really, I was. I, I created most of my my appearances in League One. Yep. And, um, and I wanted to kind of stay there. I didn't want to drop down really. Um, so there was a few clubs that came in in sort of League Two and in the National League, and I and I just kind of said, look, I, I want to try and stay in League One as best as I can. Yeah. Um, and it was um, Justin Edinburgh at Northampton. Um, God rest him. That. Um, yeah that came in for me and, and said, would I, would I sign for Northampton? And, and, um, I, I didn't, I'll be perfectly honest. I didn't jump it. I didn't jump it at the time because in my head, I was thinking, you know, I'd done well at, I'd, well, obviously uh, we've been relegated, but I'd proved myself to be able to cope with the championship as well. And would there yeah. be someone out there who might be able to, um, sort of take me in as in and and maybe bring me as a squad player for me to prove myself in a higher level and I was kind of in a little bit I didn't really know what I wanted yeah um, and then there was always something bugging at me in the back of my mind saying I didn't I, I'd moved to Milton Keynes we've settled in Milton Keynes me and my wife um I didn't really want to move a million miles away and Northampton came in at, at quite early on in the in the summer and I kind of didn't jump at it but Ultimately, I was thinking, yeah, but they're only up the road. You know, they're 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 yeah. right there. You know, they they they've got a lot of history. They're they're, they're a, a good football club. Yep. Um, and they're in League One. So I'm thinking, you know, why why have I sort of hung around? Why why haven't I just gone and signed there? You know, and then eventually I sort of said, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. And I went and signed there. And and it, the the best thing as well was not just because it was local, but you know, I was twenty. It was a twenty nine 29 i was going to be turning 30 yeah um, and they were offering me a two-year contract and i thought you know again sort of to be secure in that yeah it all just seemed to be the right place to go and um so that's what that that, that was my my main sort of reason for signing was um to, for a bit of security and to yeah. see what what we could do and then within what a month of the season happening justin Edinburgh gets sacked yeah, yeah. Uh, for you who has just signed a new two-year contract and there was probably loads of players at the time were coming in during the summer as well when the person who's brought you to the club and is managing that team goes very quickly what are you thinking because that must be like a massive like uncertainty like oh god do i have to prove myself again i've yeah. got to go through all of this i've just spent the whole summer i've finally figured out where i want to be and now the bloke who's trusted me is gone yeah. What, what 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 are you thinking then? Um, so <laughs> so when, when I when I when I first signed there, I kind of um, you sort of go through the motions of thinking, right? It's it's just up the road. Um, you know, it's I had other things going on outside of football that I wanted to be close to, sort of my wife and stuff, and yeah, um, it was kind of like it was the right decision to sign there. I have no regrets for signing there. But then when you get there and I'm thinking, right, now I actually want to do something. I want to actually prove myself. I've still got that desire to want to win games, you know. Yeah. I've got a chance here. This this is a good chance to maybe get this club up in the playoffs or, you know, for promotion yeah. and stuff. And you start dreaming, you start thinking, actually, this is this could be it. And we started signing loads of players, um, players that were like real, real good players. Yeah. Um, but there was loads of them just coming through the door, just right. loads and loads of loads of players. And I'm thinking, like, you know, I might not even get a chance here. You know, I've, I've, <laughs> I'm sort of, you know, I feel like I should play, you know, and but you know, he's just signed and he's just signed and he's just signed. How's he gonna? How's he gonna keep all of us happy? Yeah. If he's signed, players? um, and then within within literally a, a, a few games, 
so in pre-season it was kind of it was it was tough in pre-season um and then within a couple of games of the season i was sort of out of the squad and i remember knocking on justin's door and i was like um he knew why i was in there and i just said look can you just tell me why you know why yeah. why i'm in the squad and he was what i loved about justin and even though we didn't uh gel like as a player manager as as from like a manager to a player because I yeah. was out scoring. Um what I loved about him was he was so honest, brutally mm-hmm. honest. And he just said, I just don't think you're as good as what I thought what I thought. And I just sort of I just sat there and just went, I went, Wow. Oh, right. I just went, all right. And he just went, yeah, I just think you're not performing at the levels I I thought you was going to perform at. Um I said that's you know it's up for you to sort of prove yourself that you can get back up to the left. And he was just, and to be fair, I didn't hate him for it. I just sort of thought, do you know what? It's actually a bit of breath of fresh air to hear someone yeah. be so honest. Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, I'm going to have to prove you wrong then, aren't I? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I literally walked out the door saying, right, that's it. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to do it then. Yeah. Um, work, my, work my nuts off. And within, <laughs> well, a couple of weeks, he was, he was sort of fought, sort of set. Yeah. I, I thought, Oh my god! Like this is just what's going on here. Like yeah. I've signed the guy I thought was going to play me. He doesn't play me. Then he gets sacked. Then I'm thinking, oh, I've got a chance now to get back in the team. Yeah, and yeah. We signed, we, we signed Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. I was who, just about to ask you about him. Who had who had no sort of he had I had no chance of playing under Jimmy Floyd from the moment he walked through the door. He had his kind of really? way of like, right, don't really like you, 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 and you. And then in January, he signed another like 13 players. So we had a squad of like 30, I think it was like 36 players, but 20, probably 20, 25, 26 of them deserved to be playing in the starting 11. So right. could you imagine trying to keep happy yeah. you know, all the players who are not even in the squad? So, um, so it turned the club. The club really turned. It turned quite toxic, really, and players were imagine. kind of players were just like, I don't want to be there, and um, you know, it just became it became a place that I really didn't enjoy because I was going into training and I was like, you know, there's such negativity around the place. I just um, don't want to be here. Yeah, it's hard because yeah. you end up because I'm not I'm not training with the first team. Um, I'm training like on my own. Yeah. Um, I'm not being given things to do, you know. I'm not. Uh, I've got. I'm nowhere near playing any first team football. Um, it just. It was. It was really, really, really tough. Really, I mean, it was, that was that was probably one of the hardest moments in my career. That 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 time at Northampton, the first so, year especially. Did he just make it crystal clear the moment he walked in? You're not one of my players. Is that what? Is yeah. that what he said? Yeah. Or. Pretty much. Well, he came in. He came in, and obviously had a few months before January to kind of assess who he yeah. liked and who he didn't like. But it was very clear, very clear early on because you just you could tell from where he was like training, you know, yeah. and and how he not how he spoke to you. He wasn't he wasn't really disrespectful to you, but you could kind of tell straight away. I'm not yeah. in this plan. I'm yeah. just not in this kind of plan. And it, it was just like, well, I'm going to have to just keep myself fit and hope another opportunity comes along, maybe in January um and then sort of go from there and it was um yeah that was the hardest hardest year of my career i think and and, and i had a whole year out injured you know but that was that was probably the toughest yeah you had a very brief spell during that season where you went on loan to stevenage i guess i suppose again a club relatively close um yeah. to where you are probably made sense at the time northampton get relegated that season yeah jimmy's gone at that point did you kind of think, right, again, now this is my opportunity to kind of, re- again, not reinvent yourself, but I've now got a clean slate. And although we're in League Two, I'm going to really give this a go. Or did that kind of not really happen? No, it was, you're, you're spot on with everything you said there. Because when I went to Stevenage, so I'd, I'd gone through sort of half a season of being really, really down in the dumps, being like, what am I doing? Do I really want to be a footballer anymore? Um, am I ever going to find a manager that actually likes me? Because I've been through literally Robbie Nilsson, Justin Edinburgh, and then Jimmy Floyd all not really liking me as a player. And I'm thinking, am I good enough anymore? So, sorry, you went through a bit of a time period where you thought, I don't, you, you're questioning whether or not you actually want to be in the game. Yeah, I, 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 at, that, at that point, 
I didn't. I don't think I really wanted to play football anymore, and I was kind of getting to a point. Do I just do I just tear my contract up? Do I just say I don't? Really, I just just leave and not turn yeah. up and go on the wall. And, and there was all things going from my head. And then in January, Darren Sarlat Stevenage said, um, you know, the club have said they'll let you go out on loan. And I said okay, and and he was like, you know, I obviously want you to play, and I've been I've admired you for a long time. Um, come in. Um, I just want to see whether you're kind of fit. You'll you'll be on loan for the rest of the season, but I want to make sure you're fit first before I start playing. Yeah, right. I was like, okay. so I went in to Stevenage, and um, the first two games, um, I came on as a sub. Right, but I was I wasn't match fit because I hadn't been playing. Yeah, obviously at Northampton. And uh, Darren, oh, actually, it was the first session, first training session. This, this, uh, this was actually the moment I thought, actually, this guy I think quite likes me. Is <laughs> I was in, I was in training, and I got the ball about, I don't know, thirty yards out, thirty-five yards out, and I got the ball and I just passed it backwards into midfield, and then the ball went wide, and we got crossing, and he went whoa, 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 whoa. And he brought the brought the play back, gave the ball back to me, and he went. If you're in that position again, I do not want to see you pass the ball backwards. I said, I want you to turn. I want you to, turn, I want you to flick it over. I want you to nutmeg someone. I want you to <laughs> stick it in the corner. I want you to do something. Be be, be the player you want to be. And I kind of literally stood there and I thought, yeah, I like you. Wow. <laughs> I like wow. you. And that kind of gave me that little buzz to say, yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can do it still. And literally from that moment, I came on a couple of times. I then started, I scored a couple of goals, um, felt like I was really like enjoying my football again. Yeah. And then I got tackled in training and I'd done my cartilage on my knee. Oh my God. So, and then so that kept me out for the rest of the season. So um, but it was just enough, it was just enough from that time at Stevenage to make me think, no, nah, no, nah, I think I'm I think I s I I want to carry on. I can't leave yet. Yeah. And then again we kind of during that summer, as I said, Jimmy then goes. Which, yeah. from your perspective, must be, you know, you'd never see, like to see somebody lose their job or whatever, but you must be thinking, right, I can now go back. I'm in I'm, I'm in League Two now, whatever the case may be. I can now come in and, you know, go again. Let's just let's just give this one more crack. What happened during the course of, of that final season at Northampton? Um, because ultimately, at the end of it, you and several others were released at the end of that season, why did it? Why did it not work out with the club? Was it just again managers, or what happened? Yeah, um, probably a, a, a little bit of both from manager's point of view. Myself um, in that, and so before that season finished, when Jimmy Floyd was in charge, with about I think it was about six games to go, um, he got sacked and Dean Austin took over. Yeah, and Dean Austin was the assistant manager at the time. And he won like three games, drew one, um, but just didn't do enough to get to keep him up. Yeah. But he done enough for the players to love him, and the the, the fans loved him. Yeah. Everyone really loved loved Dino, and um, and he like he really liked me. And I sort of and I remember having a phone call from him saying, "Look, like get yourself back fit because you're in my plans. I want you to be part of the team." Right. Again, you're like go. You're going right. This is it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I've got this chance again. And all pre-season, I got myself fit, and we were we were we were playing some really really good football. We were. Yeah. I don't think we lost. We didn't lose all pre-season. We battered teams, <laughs> and I thought, right, this is it. We're gonna we're gonna get promoted this year. Um, we lost our first game of the season. We um, I can't remember. I think it was Lincoln we played. We we again battered them, hit the bar, hit the post, like had a goal disallowed, like there's all sorts. Mm-hmm. But we lost one nil. But no one was like disheartened or anything like that. And then game after game after game went by and we lost and we drew and then we drew and we lost and we just didn't win. We couldn't win. We couldn't buy yeah. a win. Yeah. Um and it just and then the football started to get worse because players started to get nervous and stuff like that. Yeah. And then unfortunately the the only thing that the club could do was they couldn't change all the players, you know, they, they had to change the manager again. And, yeah. and, and again, I remember when, um, when he got sacked, um, the chairman came onto the training pitch after Dean had gone um, and he got all the players in the group and he literally pointed at all of us and pointed the blame at us. And not one player turned around and argued with him because it was like, 
we let Dino down massively because not because we weren't trying. There was no, it wasn't an effort thing. Yeah, it was just the fact that Dean put in so much hard work for us to succeed, and we just we just didn't do it for him. And and it was so disappointing because he was such a such a good man and such a good coach. He just didn't get what he deserved. Do you think that maybe if the chairman had come to you guys at that point and said, look, if things don't turn around quickly, I know you you guys like him, but if things don't turn around, he's going to be gone. Do you think maybe no, that no, would have had we any... Knew, we, knew, we knew that. We had that, we, we'd had that conversation as players. Oh, you had? We'd, okay. had, we'd, had, we'd had our own meeting um, a good couple of weeks before he got sacked. And we said, right. lads, like, you know, we need to do this for him. You know, we've got, we've got to turn this around somehow. And again, rubber to green, you know, we had sending offs at the wrong time and it killed yeah. us. Own goals. And it was it, honestly, you couldn't write some of it. And then we played, um, we played Mansfield away. And that was the game where we got battered. Everyone yeah. was really like, low on confidence. And it was like, and Dino couldn't get it. He couldn't get it out of us. And he was, yeah. and you could see he was getting more and more frustrated. Yeah. Um, and then the next turning point after that was obviously when Keith Curl came in. And Keith Kell was like the complete opposite in that his mannerisms and his mentality was, um, you know, he couldn't read him. He was hard to kind of like, not. it wasn't hard to get on with because he, he I liked some of his methods and what he'd done. Yeah. Um, but again, I just felt like he had his type of player and he had his way of doing things. And again, I just didn't feel like I fit that bill. I just didn't have that connection with him. And then that was it. That was that. That was it. And um, unfortunately, there was players that he um, had annoyed again, like Jimmy did. Um, and the dressing room just got a little bit, uh, again, like toxic. Yep. Um, and then Keith started making it harder for us as players, um, like as a whole group, not just yeah. like the players he was annoying, but as a yeah. whole group, he was making it difficult. And I remember sitting down with him at the end of the season and I knew I weren't going to get a contract, but I, yeah. I had to have a meeting anyway, just as for a courtesy. <laughs> and I just said, Keith, so Keith, if you don't mind me asking, um, why did you make it such hard work for like yeah. all of us? And he was like, um, he actually apologised. He went, Dean, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry because I really liked some of you. Obviously, as a player, we, you know, we were never going to work together. Yeah. Um, but as a person, I really liked you, but um, I had to do it. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't back down to the ones that were causing the problems. I had yeah. to. I had to stand strong and make it. Make it tough. And I just thought, well, yeah, you know, did you really have to do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to. But yeah, then that's how. I, that's how it finished. I say. So at the end of that season, um, I think I've, I've heard you talking about the fact that you wanted to then just take some time to be at home. Yeah, more. is that? Is that right? Yeah, my son was born. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that was, my son was born in July, uh, late July. Um, I, my contracts sort of expired at the end of June. Yeah. And I just said, I said to my wife from the very get go, I said, you know, we've been waiting um, a long, long time for this young man to come along, um, going through, I won't go into too much detail, but loads of different methods and, um, yeah. Yeah, he was only a month away, and I didn't want to go and sign somewhere and not spend that quality time at home with with my son. Yeah, and I knew I knew that would um, hamper my chances of playing maybe in the league um, or maybe even in the conference or whatever. But I couldn't care less. No, you know, when you've was, gone through that, like, just when you've gone through all of that sort of stuff to get to that point where he's finally here, like. I couldn't honestly. It's, it's such a strange place to be because all I've done, I've, I've played football all my life. That's all I've done. Yeah. And to be able to turn around, like literally with a click of my finger, to say I couldn't care less about that now. I've yeah. got my son. You know, and that's it. And I, and I spent three months at home, three just over three months at home with him and my wife. And it, I was, I've never been happier. Honestly, yeah. it was, it was the best time of my life. Yeah. I can, I can. I 100% relate to that. I've um, when when my son was born, he was born in November, um, and I took all of my holiday so that I could then spend that plus the paternity at home. So I spent a solid month at home with him, 
And okay. then it then transpired that I was then ill for a little bit. I had a couple of weeks off with, with, with work, etc. So I was then at home with him for that. Yeah, no, 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 don't, 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 don't be using those <laughs> quotation marks. Um, <laughs> and, um, no, and then obviously with all of this stuff going on at the moment, I've just had that massive solid chunk of time with him. And you, you never get that back, do you? It's just, it's an amazing. Um, and the thing is like everything that's going on now, you know, and, and we've been, we're coming up to what, six weeks in lockdown. Mm. And uh, there's been so many lads that I've spoken to that have said, you know what, like, it's it's obviously not great being away from football and um, I miss the boys and I miss the games and I miss yeah. the adrenaline. He said, but there's one thing that, you know, the one massive positive is that I've spent so much time with my kids and, yeah. you, know, you know, being able to teach them things that, you know, I wouldn't have maybe been able to do before and, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's one of the real positives that's come out of this is is that's your family, isn't it? It's that yeah. is, is it. So um yeah, I, I spent three months at home. Best best three months of my life so far. Um I was knackered for all of it. But um <laughs> but um yeah, yeah it, was, it 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 had to be done and I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Yeah, definitely. Um and then we come full circle, we, as we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, then the offer from Stone Market comes. Um, and again, I've, I've heard that you that somebody spoke to you about it and you said no. Yeah. And you did you then go back to them and say, actually, if they're still interested, I'm, I'm potentially so Jack, about so, it? So it, was Jack, it was Jack Ainsley had, yeah. um, had messaged me in the uh, July, I think it was. It might have even been in the June. Um, and just said, you know, would I would I come and sign for Stowe? And I said, Jack, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm not signing anywhere. You know, yeah. I'm not anywhere. You know, uh, it could be Man United. I'd still be at home. And I said, <laughs> um, I just said, look, I'm 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 going to be at home. Um, if anything changes, then I'll obviously let you know and stuff sure. like that. And then, um, yeah, a good few months later, he sort of, I I'd started training with Barnet. Yeah. And um I said to Hayley, because I'd been at home for obviously a while and I said I, and she had well funny enough she said to me, she was like, look, are you not missing it? And I said, well, I'm a little bit said, but I'm in, I'm having such a great time at home. Yeah. And she said, yeah, but I feel like you need to go and do something. I think she was just trying to kick me out the house. <laughs> and um so I I spoke to I spoke to Darren Curry who I used to play with at Ipswich. Yeah. And um he was at Barnet and he said, look, come and train with us. And literally within about a week, 10 days of training there, Darren was like, look, we want to offer you a contract. And I said, okay. He said, but bear with me because the chairman can be a bit, you know, a bit um, wheeler dealer, dealerish. He yeah. said, but like, I just need to work. He, goes, he goes, I just need to work out a few things. Yeah. And uh, I was like, like, no worries. So I just left it. And then it went about another week probably about another week, 10 days, something like that. And um, and then they said, look, we've got an offer for you. And I went in and, and it just felt like I'd been through this whole career and I'd played nearly 500 games and scored a bundle of goals. And it felt like it was just taking the mick out of me a little bit. Really? Um, I'd also been there training and I've been training for nothing and, um, you know, obviously grateful for the opportunity, but proving day in, day out that I'm good enough for this team. Yeah. Um, and then I just thought, no, you've kind of taken the mick out of me a little bit there. Um, so I kind of said, look, I'm going to have to go away and think about it. Um, yeah. And then the next day he came back to me, this was the chairman, and said, well, offer's off the table. We've, there's nothing for you here now. And I just went, all right, well, thanks thanks for the last four weeks. I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Is Tony somebody? I can't remember his name. Is it? Is it still him? Is he still there? Tony, what a chair. Yeah, is it? Is it Tony something? I can't remember his last name now. I, I can't think of his name. I no, but I, I, I do know he's got that kind of a reputation. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it was a little bit. It was a little bit because me and Darren got on really well, and 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 Daz was like, you know, I'm I'm gutted because you're a friend. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I said that it is what it is. I said yeah. I, Thanks, thanks for letting me come and train. I feel really fit. I feel really good. Now you give me a chance to go somewhere else. Like fit. Right. And um, and I think I must have put a few things up on maybe social media or something like that. And so Jack right. just messaged and he said, you know, I don't. I've seen a couple of things. 
um, would you speak with uh, Rick? Yep. Um, and I said, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's just let's have a chat at least and show and show him like you know the courtesy of at least speaking to him. Yeah. Um, and literally within 10, 15 minutes of sitting with Tom Morley and and Rick, um, I sort of thought actually this is what I need. I need I need to be at a club that are relevant of where they are in yep. in the world in in the leagues or wherever they are. Um, I need to be somewhere where I'm going to enjoy my football. I'm going to mm-hmm. have fun. Um, and I'm going to be with a group of lads, which by the by the sound of it at the time, yeah, were just it was just a good laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, and not only that, you know, there was a trophy. There was a, the vase was up for grabs. Yep. Um, trip to Wembley. There was the obviously the league, the cup too. We we were we were on for like four cups. Yeah, yeah. And kind of, I sat down. I was thinking, do you know what? I don't care what league this is. I I want to go and win some win some trophies as well. Then that was it. I said, yeah, let's show me where to sign. Yeah. So did you, because I know your brother played um, a lot of non-league football, did you kind of ask him about kind of going down to that sort of level or did it, was that uh, not really, did you consult him? Yeah, he did actually. Ben said, um, uh, if you have got any questions like, mm. and you're worried about anything, just just ask. But I'll yeah. be honest, I didn't, I didn't have any questions. I just said like, because Stowe, the way they were doing it, or the way they are doing it, um, is so is is as professional as you're going to get. Yeah, it is. For, really for, is. for a non for a non league club. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't feel like okay, I was taking quite a few drops down in levels. Yeah. But it didn't feel like that because you know they've got for starters they've got a kit man. You know yeah. everyone's on everyone's on payroll. You know mm-hmm. it's all things like that, and you kind of think, yeah, actually yeah. I, I quite like I quite like this, and it, and the only thing that did disappoint me was. Oh, well, what didn't disappoint me, it was just unlucky, was everyone was banging on about how lovely the pitch was. And then literally I signed and we had torrential rain all week. And the first time I played there, it was an absolute bog. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought you said this pitch was good. <laughs> but, it yeah. had a bit of a reputation, that pitch, of starting off well and then gradually declining very, very quickly. I just signed at the wrong time. So, so what have you? I mean, obviously, quality-wise, the difference between the football league and non-league, we all know there's a reason why people, you know, are at non-league level, whatever the case. What's been the biggest challenge from going from playing regular league football down to a non-league standard? Um, probably well, pitches for starters. Yes. Yeah, uh, especially such a big drop. Mm-hmm. Um, Pitches when when you when you play on a bad pitch in League Two, you know I I, I would have loved to have played on a pitch like that, you know, <laughs> like yes. in my time yeah. this season. Um, but the biggest thing for me is that we had some we had real com- camaraderie in the dressing room, but there's there is a big difference between seeing your mates on every single day from yeah. nine o'clock in the morning till three four o'clock in the afternoon, Monday Tuesday, you know whether you have Wednesday off, but like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, you're seeing them all the time. So you get that real kind of like, yeah, they end up being like your brothers. Yeah. Whereas when you're only training on a Tuesday night, Thursday night, you're, you may be only seeing them three, three days a week. And it's not for like that long period either. It's for like an hour and a half or a couple of hours max. You mm. really don't. And because I'd only, I'd only turn up in November and then obviously it finished in March. Yeah, I've been, only four months. I've seen seen them maybe two or three times a week. Yeah. So that's why I said it's devastating. Obviously, the way it ended. Yeah. But boys that have been there from the get go through pre season, built up those real relationships. They're the ones I feel really, really like terrible for yeah. because they they would get to that point where they were feeling like brothers. They were feeling like that real connection. Mm-hmm. Whereas I, I was. I was just at that point where I was just getting to know people and then it gets cut, you know? Yeah. And so that's why, that's why it felt like a little bit, you know, that, that is the biggest difference I feel from, from being full time to non-league, non-league part-time. Yeah, definitely. What, what do you make of the Stowe fans? <laughs> yeah, funny, mate. Yeah, <laughs> funny. <laughs> love it. I absolutely love it. They, and they're, so approachable as well like they'll just come up to you and you just chat just rubbish to them it's quality 
you know, they're, they're, <laughs> Clem's called them and all that. They're the fair play to them. It's, it's, a, um, it's the best part about that league that you can then have that communication with the players afterwards. Do you know what I mean? You you then have you you're not it's not worlds apart like it is higher up. And it's obviously you know they're worlds apart for a reason. But at non-league, just being able to have that conversation with someone about a particular think, moment in the game, it must be really refreshing. I think that's why. Again, when I talk about having that connection with people, I really I really love everyone at the club. Um, and it's kind of, and all the fans and everything like that. They 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 took me in really nicely. Took me in really well. And like there was always that little bit of like banter, like you know, if I made a mistake, it was like bloody hell, I thought you were good or whatever it was. You know, and it's, and it's just, you know what I mean? I just you just take it on the chin. You think, oh, so yeah. it's all in good jest. You know what I mean? Um, but the thing that I found difficult was after a game, I had like quite a long journey to get home. Yeah. And ideally, ideally. I'd stay there with like my missus, my parents, we'd have a couple of drinks and like we'd enjoy it and then we'd we'd set off home and we'd only be 20 minutes up the road. Yeah. Uh, but because I had such a long journey, I felt like I needed to leave soon, otherwise I wouldn't get back till midnight. Yeah. Uh, so having that time with people was probably my the biggest part of this season that I kind of um kind of missed it really, sort of spending more time with everyone. Yeah, definitely. Um and now that the season has come to a very abrupt end, um, if you don't mind me asking, obviously I don't, I don't know, but what what are you kind of thinking for next season? Have you kind of thought that far ahead, or are you just kind of watching how things un- you know unravel in the world and then just make a decision after that point? Well, it's, it it will be um, sort of a decision from both ends, really, because mm-hmm. you, know, you can only imagine what it's done financially to every football club yeah. throughout the whole country. Yeah. Um, so you know, if they're if they're looking at their finances and thinking, well, you know, we've got a player who who lives, you know, a couple of hours away, and he's got to travel in, and we're trying to cut the wage bill, and we need to maybe think of players that are maybe closer to here, or you know, whatever it may be, they might have they they'll have their own decision to make on their players. Yeah. You know? so then for me personally, I've always said I wanted to play till I'm 35, and I'm 34 this year. Um, so if I can play one more season, then I've achieved what I set out to when I was 17. Yeah. So um, wherever that may be, whether it's at Stowe, whether it's locally, wherever it may be, if I can get yeah. one more season out, out of these old legs, then um, then <laughs> I'll give it a go. Fantastic. Uh, let's just f- let's finish this off with some, uh, for some uh, Twitter questions and Facebook questions, if that's all right, Dean, and then, uh, then we'll wrap was this up. There, was, was there some? Was there? Oh, right, yeah. cool. Yeah, no, there is, there is. I, I, we, we ask on Facebook, we ask on Instagram, we, we get questions, you know, if you it's don't see it on Twitter, it doesn't mean it's not there. Is it my mum, is it? Is it mum again, is it? <laughs> mum and dad, mum and dad, what, what do they want? <laughs> so let's uh, let's open up on Facebook, let's start off with those. So we've got, um, got Matthew Hogan, he asks, um, who is the favourite, who's your favourite manager that you've played under? Uh, Carl Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. For the brand of football, would you say, or brand of football, length of time? You know, yeah. he helped me. He didn't just help me on the pitch; he helped me massively off it as well. Yeah. Uh, Scott asks, uh, at your time at Ipswich, when you were coming up through the youth teams, who who gave you the best piece of advice? That's a great question. Great question. Who gave me best piece of advice? Um, probably what did you say for your youth team? Yeah, for before you kind of broke it before your debut, I suppose. Let's yeah, go for that. I I heard, yeah, I thought I heard that right. Probably mm. two people, two people. There was uh, a coach called Brian Clug, who um, he he's, he's like, coach. yeah, he he um, he's like the head of the academy now, um, yeah. and he went away and he's come back, but he was like. He was like a dad. He was like my football dad. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so anything that he said to me, I took as gospel. So um, he was he was a massive, massive part of my development. But the yeah. second the second guy was um, I don't know if you remember him, but, uh, Marcus Stewart, maybe someone like that. Um, he uh, he sat he sat next to me when he was having lunch when I was thirteen or fourteen. Right. And what he used to do the first thing because again, a real tight knit club. Yeah. Is if if we were training and having lunch and the first team would 
train the same day they would come and just sit with us they would go and like mingle with all the, and we were just like looking at all these players like, oh my god like you know this is marcus stewart and he, he sat next to me and he, and he sat next to me he was like all right son you know what's what's your name kind of thing and i'm just chatting up chatting away to him and he was just like you know and he just said the real kind of generic stuff like you know you just you got to work hard you know be selfish when you're going for goal and uh, make sure you hit the target and all this stuff and I'm just looking at him like drooling thinking oh my god Marcus Stewart <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah Marcus Stewart but Brian Clue Brian yeah. Clue was my football dad definitely uh we've got just a couple more so this comes from Steve Sand he says um what is your favorite goal in your career um if it's one of the hat-trick goals I'll ask you for another one so, so I, know, I know you're probably going to say that <laughs> Uh, my favourite goal. Um, God, there's so many. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> uh, but to be fair, I scored. Um, I scored a goal against AFC Wimbledon when at MK Dons, mm. uh, and obviously people will understand the rivalry. Yeah. Um, and it was a real. It was the first time actually that AFC had got into League One, and so yeah. it was the first the first league meeting we'd, we'd met in the cup before, but it's the first league meeting and so there was that added call that added kind of like you know whoever wins this game is like the better club mm. um and i got a penalty and i scored it and we won one nil and it was kind of like for me for the fans for everyone in the whole town it was yeah it was it was a, a good night let's just say that yeah <laughs> And the final question that we've got uh, comes in from Simon Stone. He says, "Would you ever consider a um, Would you ever consider management after your time in the games?" Um, I've, yeah, I thought about it. Um, I think I think you need to be a certain character to be a manager, right? Um, now, I I feel like I get on quite well with people. Yeah. Uh, and the problem is I'll have as a manager, if I was to become a manager, is that I don't like letting people down. Right. I always want to try and keep everyone happy. And you can't, yeah. you physically can't do that. Yeah. You can try your best, but people are going to get annoyed at you. Um, and they're going to say things behind your back and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but an assistant, so an assistant yeah. is like that kind of, that connection between the players and the manager. Everybody loves the assistant. <laughs> everyone loves the assistant. But, when you look at like what the, you need to be as a, as a character, as an assistant, I think mm. I fit that bill much better than a manager. Okay. Um, a couple of questions to follow up on that for me um, before we wrap this up. Have you done any coaching badges at this point or are you, are you still kind of been going through the, you know, yeah, I feel like I'm, doing, I'm doing my UA for B at the moment. Um, and it has, to, unfortunately it's had to be sort of postponed. Sure. Sure. Um, so I'm on my way to get my UA for B, which would be nice. That that would be allow me to coach at a, a good level. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once with once I've done that, naturally I would like to do my A. Yeah. Um, and just see what it takes me. Really, I think I think in this day and age, it, you need your badges. Don't get me wrong, but it's more about your experiences and how you've been perceived as a player. Can you yeah. can you kind of transfer that from a player into yeah. Other players, that's probably the biggest thing um, is is using that knowledge to then say to the next young player, you know, this is this is what you've got to do to 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 bet yourself. So that's Definitely. that's a challenge itself. Definitely. Um, and then I suppose final questions from me is have, with your role at MK, have they cut, are the badges a necessary part of that, or is that kind of do you not really do that? What is your role at MK and uh, yeah, yeah, so talk through that very quickly. My my, my role at MK. I mean, when I left MK, I remember speaking to um, a few people there, and they said, "Look, if, if you ever come to a point where you you want to come away from football, so just just let us know because there'll always be something here for you." Yeah, I kind of thought, you know, again, that shows their respect for their players and stuff. And yeah, thought, okay, so when when I was in this kind of limbo period, not really knowing if I'm going to sort of carry on, what I'm going to do. Um, I just contacted them and, and said, you know, I'm basically cashing in on what you said a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they, they, they bought this role or they, they made this role, which they've, they've had before um, for another player, funny enough. 
Um, but it's been kind of this this role for like the charity side of the football club has has, has been dormant for a little while. And um, okay, they just said they looked at my character and they looked at the way I kind of have been as a player, and they said actually I feel like you could probably do this pretty well. And yeah. essentially, what it is 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 the set, which is the sports and education trust for for MK Dons, is the charity side, which deliver football sessions, education sessions, health sessions for the local community. Yeah. And what they need, what they need is they need someone to front it, to be the face of it, to go and get funding for it, to yeah. speak to all the local businesses and local com- companies and everyone. Yeah. Um, and they just said, "Are you up for doing that?" And I was like, "Yeah." Let's give it a go. You know, I've played, I've kicked a ball around for 16 years. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> <laughs> and it seems, and it's going, and it's, and it's going pretty well. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And it's, it's not just the job role that I'm enjoying. It's, it's the people that I'm surrounded by. And um, yeah, it feels like I'm, I'm back home, if you know what I mean. So it's, uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. Fantastic stuff. Dean, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast. And, uh, Nearly two hours. Look at that. Absolutely flown by. It's been, it's been amazing listening to your journey throughout football. Um, learning so much by doing these podcasts. Just You look at things from a fan's perspective and when you see headlines of a player's been released or they're falling out with a manager, all the you know players get a lot of the blame. But when you actually listen and delve into the stories, it's, it's so interesting to, uh, to hear what goes on. So thank you very much for your time. Really do appreciate it. If you guys have enjoyed the video... Uh, if you're watching from a YouTube perspective, make sure you hit a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you're on a podcasting platform, uh, five star reviews apparently is what you need to do. I'm not into the podcast side of things, but Adams, that's more his domain. So five star review and also subscribe on there. And until the next time that we join each other, adios.